know. I no, Mother, I, really, I would love to go, but I don't get a vacation until next March. A week alone in the desert with Mother? The last time I went to a spa with Mother, she accused him of sir of getting fresh. I go with you guys, but hopefully Todd and I will be on our trip by then. Well, Mother, I have a birthday every year. What? What are you doing? Oh, all right, I'll fool. She's waxing her mustache. Yeah, Mother, I am having a party. I'm giving one for myself. No, it was not my psychiatrist's idea. He's out of town this week. <laughs> no, Mother, no. Mother, there's something I want to do for myself. Really. I, I want to do it my way this year. I want my own music, my own food, my own friends. The people that I love the most. Yes, Mother, you are invited. Theme? What, you think I should have a theme? Well, if this is just being held in my living room, I don't think a New England clam bake would work in my living room. How about Italian? Everybody loves pasta. $55 a head for pasta? Well, what if I make the pasta and you bring the sauce? Well, that's a hell of a lot for noodles. Could I get back to you on that? Thanks. <laughs> 55 bucks a head, I'll make the pasta. Cook the sauce and sing a medley from Don Giovanni. Is that a firm offer? Talk to my agent. So how old are you going to be anyway? 46? 45. And I feel great about it. Sure you do. I do. Well, 45 is a nice round number. Five years from now, you'll be, what, half a century? Thank you for pointing that out. However, nothing that you or anyone else says is going to keep me from enjoying my birthday. Birthday? What's the big deal, anyway? The way I look at it, you're just one step closer to lying in a drawer with a tag on your toes. Words to live by. Ms. O'Neill, how does your client wish to plea? Not guilty, Your Honor. So, entered. Uh, Mr. Snell, may we request the honor of your presence in this courtroom in two weeks? All right, next case. How are you doing, Shane? Okay, I guess. Good. <laughs> Kind of weirded me out to spend the night in jail. I didn't sleep much. Oh, I'll bet. Case number 823671, People versus Gray. Ah, uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Gray is charged with grand theft auto and possession of a controlled substance. On November 5th, Mr. Gray and several other young men were stopped by police for a traffic violation. The police determined that the vehicle was stolen and discovered a film canister containing two grams of cocaine in the glove compartment. Miss O'Neill, how does your client plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Well, Your Honor, the people request that bail be set at $5,000. I mean, Mr. Gray is from out of town, and we believe him to be a substantial flight risk. Your Honor, this is Mr. Gray's first alleged offense. Everyone starts somewhere, Ms. O'Neill. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor, but I hadn't finished with my argument. Well, excuse me, Counselor, but I think that I've heard enough. Now, uh, as for you, young man, don't expect any special treatment in this courtroom. I'm setting the bail at $5,000. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'll see you in court uh, two weeks from Wednesday? Yes, Your Honor. Let's take a 15-minute recess. Sir. 
So you think you can get someone to put up the bail, Shane? I think so. But after that, I, after the bail thing, I can just go back to school? Sure. It's just I've got, you know, dress rehearsal tomorrow night for the school play. It's um, Music Man, and I've got the lead. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I don't see any problem. I just wish I'd never gotten into Marco's car. It was the dumbest thing I've ever done. I mean, what if colleges find out about this? I mean, is it going to go on one transcript? Um, we'll worry about that later, Shane. Look, I'll call you before the hearing and do me a favor. Just stay out of trouble till then. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, Miss O'Neill. Hi, I'm Bob Adamson. Oh, oh yes, you're you're the family that Shane's living with. We'd like to uh, help pay Shane's bail. Oh, well, that's great. Well, you'll want to see the uh, bail desk at the clerk's office. Oh, we just hate to think of being in that jail with all those criminals. Yes. Well, the county clerk I know will be happy to help you get him out today. Well, Miss O'Neill, we want you to know what a good kid Shane is. He works hard, does well in school, follows the rules. It's not like him to get in trouble. No, he's just been worried about his father recently. His father? Yes, he's an Air Force pilot. He was injured in Desert Storm. Uh, Shane is just staying with us until his father is well enough to join him. He's in a hospital in Germany. He got shot down by a scud missile. He did not. Did too, but he had a red in the telegram. Oh, all right, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Miss O'Neill, it's just that we feel a responsibility towards Shane well, and his father. I mean, after all, you know, he did risk his life for our country. You know, the least we can do is safeguard his son. Yes, well, I understand, Mr. Adamson. Um, actually, I feel very optimistic about Shane's case. He was not driving the car, and the DA is going to have a hard time proving to whom the drugs belong. So I don't think you should worry. I think we have a good shot. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, I think Shane's very lucky to have people like you who care about him. I'm sorry, I wish I could stay and talk longer. Uh, this is my card. I'll be in my office after lunch. So um, give me a call if you have any problem with the bail. Excuse me. I ran a check on that blue Chevy. It's been rear-ended five times in the last six months. Since you're cleaning Frazier out. <laughs> Do you have any luck on the snail case? No, no. I did turn up something interesting on the gray case. The gray case? Shane Gray, high school kid. Spoke to his counselor today. I didn't ask you to speak to his counselor. Did you know he was a transfer student? So? So, the school never got the transcript from the Texas high school he attended last year. So what? So nothing. It's just interesting. I think maybe I'll check out that Texas angle. But, Kovach, don't knock yourself out over this one, Art. I have everything I need. I need some help on the Snell case. Without a witness, he's going to be serving some time. Is there no justice? All he did was rip off a bank. Innocent until proven guilty, Kovac. Yeah, yeah. Three more people are SVP three birthday parties. Yeah? You're not inviting him, are you? Well, I haven't yet. I don't think he likes birthdays much. Well, would you, if you were turning the big 6-0 tomorrow, still working for the county and about as popular with your family as Bing Crosby? His birthday's tomorrow? Why didn't you tell me tomorrow was your birthday? Why would I do that? Because that's what people do, Kovach. They interact socially. They wish each other a happy birthday. That is, of course, assuming that they want to have a happy birthday. Mm. Not that it's any of your business, Ms. O'Neill, but my birthday's going to be plenty happy. Really? What are you going to do? Spend it with an old friend. Oh. Oh. That should be nice. Yeah, real nice. So what do you want to see me about? Oh, yeah, the great case. Made a few calls to Texas. Look, I appreciate your diligence, Kovach, but really, I've got a lot more important cases on my plate right now. Maybe, but I thought you'd be interested in a few of the facts I dug up on old Shane Gray. Like what? Like the fact that he's still attending high school in Texas. 
Popach. I just watched the kid walk out of jail. His host family just posted $5,000 bail for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Shane Gray is an 18-year-old high school student in Bowie High in Waxahachie, Texas. Very nice guy. I just talked to him on the phone. Very nice guy. As a matter of fact, he's student body president. Unfortunately, the National Fingerprint Registry says that the kid you just waved bye-bye to is a 30-year-old drifter named Wade Robert Cameron. So your birthday's next week, huh? That makes us the same sign. A few innocent inquiries? Because you stuck your nose in where it was not needed. I'm about to walk into a courtroom looking like a fool. You're gonna look like a fool one way or the other, the way I see it, I was cutting your losses. How? By making the Texas authorities suspicious enough to contact the DA? We're supposed to help our clients, Kovach, not get them rearrested. That kid looked like a phony from the get-go, counselor. Look, Kovach, my client told me his name was Shane Gray. Now, it's not our duty to expose his real identity to the court. I was being thorough. You were being a cop. Sticks and stones. You're damn right we want our money back. I'm a vet, Your Honor. Do you think that I would put up bail for some 30-year-old teenage pervert? Your Honor, Mr. and Mrs. Adamson would like to surrender their surety before Mr. Cameron defaults. Oh. Well, I can't say that I blame them, Ms. Grant. They'll get their money back. Uh, for now, uh, Ms. O'Neill, would you advise your client, Mr. Gray, or... Mr. Cameron, or whomever he happens to be this week, that his bail is revoked. And I am going to continue this case and defer on the question of a new bail until the identity question is settled. Your Honor, this is hardly a capital case. I suggest that bail must be set for my client. This is clearly a violation of his... Well, save your arguments for the appellate court, Miss O'Neill. I am not setting bail until I know who the heck it is that I am dealing with here. Next case. Okay, Wade, let's cut the bowl. The game is over. You are not Shane Gray. You're not 18 years old. So you want to tell me what the real story is? The real story is I am Shane Gray, and I don't even know who Wade Cameron is, I swear. Wade. Shane. Okay, look, uh, Wade, Shane, look, I don't care if you tell me you're Mahatma Gandhi. But if you are Mahatma Gandhi, you better be able to prove it. Right now, I'm looking at a guy in very hot water, and trust me, I'm the only one who can pull you out. So I think it's time that we leveled with each other. Hmm? Mr. Neal, all I can tell you is that this is the biggest nightmare of my life. Everything I tell you is in complete confidence, right? Right. Okay. I am Shane Gray. But my father wasn't wounded in Desert Storm. That's the start. He's in a military prison. Wade. Shane, I'm telling you the truth. I... I know this sounds unbelievable, but this whole thing, this my my arrest, this a whole attempt to discredit my identity is all part of a government plot to silence me and my dad. Okay. Look, why don't we talk another time when you've had a chance to think things through? <sighs> Miss O'Neill. Yes. I don't expect you or anyone else to believe me. But right now my father's in a prison because he's threatened to disclose information that could implicate high up military officials in Desert Storm. Sounds crazy, right? Look at the Pentagon Papers. Look at Watergate, Contragate. These things happen. There are secrets out there that people are getting killed for. Shane, the military doesn't even have any record on Lieutenant Lionel Gray. Of course not. They have to pretend he doesn't exist, and they have to pretend I don't exist. I mean, it's just a matter of time before I'm just going to disappear altogether. Look, Shane... <clears throat> Have you ever been institutionalized? No. Or had any contact at all with the mental health profession? Never. Well, I wondered if you might have a little talk with the psychiatrist. Okay. I'll talk to whoever you want, but I'm still going to be Shane Gray. 
But you'll talk to him again, won't you, Doctor? I will, but I really don't think my evaluation of Mr. Cameron will change significantly. What about drug use? Could that cause these paranoid delusions? It could, but your client strikes me as clean as a whistle, Ms. O'Neill. And what is the bottom line here, Dr. Oney? Well, remember, I'm just one opinion. But I'll tell you, <laughs> your client's a funny one. Despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, for reasons known only to himself, this young man clings to the story that he's Shane Gray. But we know who he is. We have his fingerprints. Why does he stick to this crazy story? Who should I know? I'm not a mind reader, Ms. O'Neill. Is he competent to stand trial? Well, being a pathological liar doesn't make him incompetent to stand trial. As a matter of fact, it might be an asset. You know, Helen's nephew is a florist. I told him that you'd call him this afternoon for an estimate. But I'm not even sure I want a florist, Mother. I may go down to the flower mart myself. Isn't that near Skid Row? My whole life is near Skid Row, Mother. Remind me. By the way, I'll have Judy bake her famous chocolate cake. I already ordered one, Mother. But you're never going to buy one as good as Tootie. Probably not, but I want to do this myself. Oh, well. All right, I understand. I, I guess I'm just glad that you're happy about your birthday. It gets difficult after 40. It's difficult after 30. Well, how do you think I feel about having a daughter who's 45? <laughs> I never thought I'd be 45 say nothing about having a daughter that age. That Doreen? Oh. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, I'm late. Just got off the green. <laughs> Todd's big surprise. My first lesson. Golf lessons? Golf lessons, golf clubs, golf wardrobe, and an entire set of martini glasses labeled the 19th hole. <laughs> it isn't funny. It's his idea of how we can spend quality time. Ten hours of listening to his golf tips and watching him putt is not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> all that fighting about finances, and he goes and blows our cruise money on golf accessories. And all of this for the single most boring pastime known to man. But look at me. He's finally succeeded in creating the ultimate Hancock Park matron. Sorry, Mother. Didn't look at me. I never liked golf. All those men were leaving themselves in the bushes. I had better things to do with my time. Maybe that's my problem. Lately, I don't feel like I have anything better to do with my time. Does anyone else want a glass of wine? Waiter. So the judge kicked me out of the courtroom, and I came right back. I said, go ahead, cite me for contempt. But I'm not about to let this incompetent ambulance chaser take my client's baby away. <laughs> Did he cite you? No, no, no. I think he hated the guy, too. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Hank. Yeah, no problem. Bravo. Bring me a bottle, J.G. Come on, Walter. The bar is closed. This bar ain't close. I think you had enough. What the hell cares what you think, huh? Bring me that damn bottle. Waller, get your hands off me. Waller, it's time to go home. Well, maybe I don't want to go oh, home. Oh, come on, big guy. You look. Hey, 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 wait. Take, take it easy. Take it easy, man. Well, looky here. Mother Teresa on the tenth floor. I'm not going to save any souls here tonight, sister. You better get out of my way. I think you better get him out of here, Mr. Mitchell. Listen, Come on, Walter. I'll drive you home. Uh, I got my own car. Yeah, Don't we're you? not going anywhere tonight, pal. You're not my pal. I sure the hell ain't your pal.
Kovac, you're home. Kovac, is this it? Handles at the front. Good night. Happy birthday. cake or anything? I guess not. He doesn't have a lot of friends. He may not have any friends. Yeah, but he has kids, doesn't he? Well, one's in jail because he put him there, and the other one won't talk to him. That is so sad. I mean, nobody cared that it was his birthday. Well, the truth is, Kim, he's a hard man to like. Yeah, but still, I mean, look at the difference. Here you are having this big party with all your friends and music and dancing and stuff, and this poor guy spends his birthday alone in a bar. I mean, it makes me want to cry. Kim, the man is insufferable. Well, maybe he's insufferable because nobody ever bothered to pay attention to him. You know, to make him feel like he was someone special. Yeah, maybe. But you didn't invite him to your party, didn't you? Not yet, no. Well, why don't you? He wouldn't come, trust me. Rosie, the poor guy doesn't have anybody. He's totally alienated from the rest of the whole world. Alienated? He, he drinks every night just to escape his pain. Kim, you have been listening to too much talk radio. I know. Hey, look, this is what you do, okay? This is good. You get him to come over the house, right? One way or the other, and then the party turns out to be for him, too. What a bad idea. You know, people go out of their way to save trees and animals and old buildings. Well, what about saving another human being? It wouldn't work. Yes, it would. I mean, think about how happy he'd be. He'd be so surprised. I mean, all those people would be there for him. He'd have his own cake, his own presents. No presents. No one has ever done anything like this for him, Rosie. I just know it'll change his life, please. You're really not such a rotten kid, after all. <laughs> Hi. Hi! Where's your car? I came in a cab. Oh. Why does it look like you're moving in? I left the kids with Todd. It's his turn for a while. I figure he owes me that much. Uh, Kim, don't you think it's time to get ready for school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, how does Todd feel about this? I didn't present it as an option. I told him I need a break. I'll call you in a couple of days. Oh, so this is just a temporary thing. I honestly don't know. Rosie? you mind if I stay here for a while? Well, no, if, if you don't mind sleeping on the couch. At this point, I'd sleep in the bathtub if it meant a couple of minutes to myself. Okay. Come on in. I'll make you coffee. Okay. Give me one of those. Hey! <whistles> Why, why don't you slow down? Why are you always in such a hurry? I got you the, uh, Did you just whistle at me? Yeah, uh, I have the stuff that you want on on the great case. Mr. Kovach, let me give you a piece of advice. I don't care if you call me Ms. O'Neill. I don't care if you call me Toots. I don't give a damn what you call me, but don't you ever, ever whistle for me again. All right, all right. Don't get your knickers in a twist. So how are we feeling this morning, anyway? Same as ever. Did you hear from your daughter yesterday? Why would I? It was your birthday. Look, you may need everybody in the world prancing around making a big stink about your birthday. 
As far as I'm concerned, my birthday's just the day when I renew my driver's license. So why don't we just forget about it? Fine. So what do you have for me? The Adamson School District received a telegram from the American Embassy in Germany requesting a host family for a wounded Air Force lieutenant's son. The problem is, the telegrams are phony. Your guy showed up a few days later. Anyone traced the telegram? Telegrams are untraceable. Pretty good scam. This guy, Gray's, oh, he's, he's, he's a piece of work. Yeah, that kid's all right. Conned a dentist into giving him some braces. Bummed a couple of free nights at a hotel and got a complete beauty makeover, all before showing up at the Adamsons. Terrific. Now the Adamsons are filing a complaint against this guy for tricking them out of their hospitality, and I am left with either a pathological liar, a, a, a con man, or a political prisoner, or maybe all three. Why do I suddenly feel like I'm in a Kafka novel? Which one? You didn't tell me about the braces and the hotel rooms. You didn't ask. Look, how can I effectively defend you if you don't tell me the truth? I've told you the truth. The braces, the hotel rooms, everything. It's all part of my act. I've been in deep cover, Miss O'Neill. Let's say that you have been in deep cover. Let's say the entire United States government is out to get you. Well, I have to prove it. So far, you haven't been very helpful. In fact, you haven't given me squat. I need hard evidence, and you're giving me John Le Carre novels. Meanwhile, the DA probably has a file an inch thick on your exploits. I promise you, this will never get to court. They can't afford to let me testify. I'm probably under surveillance right now. Would you come down to Earth? This is reality. Fraud is a felony. You could go to prison. Believe me, they're going to call you anything they want in there. Sonia, you can't let them get me. I mean, you're all I got. I've told you everything I possibly could. What else am I supposed to do? I'm really scared. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I just need to ask you a few more questions. Ask me anything. What's your real name? Anything but that. That's one thing I can't tell you. It's for your own protection. Okay. Now, you lived in Texas last year, right? And who did you live with there? Uh, the Halseys in Waxahachie. Well, my dad was stationed in Germany. They were, they were real nice people. The Halseys. Uh, look, just out of curiosity, where else did you live in the last few years? Uh, it's all over the place. It was um, Colorado, and Arkansas, and uh, Nevada, South Dakota, and Shawnee, Kansas. Let me ask you this. Uh, were you always a senior in high school? Miss O'Neill, it's important that you don't know too much. Okay. I don't know, Ben. Oh, stay away from the egg salad, Rosie. It looks soggy. No, I'm talking about the gray case. I'm getting a bad feeling about this one. It just keeps unraveling. Well, you know what to do, Rosie. Move it through as quickly as you can, and then clean it out before anything else pops up. I'm meeting with the DA right now. For both of us. My treat. Thank you. You're welcome. See ya. Yeah, bye. Oh, Ben? Yeah? About my party Saturday night? Oh. There's been a change of plans. The guest of honor's Kovach. Oh, come on, Rosie. It's his birthday, too, Ben. Are you going to come or not? Well, I don't know, you know. Saturday is the Sabbath, and don't I... Don't give me that. The party starts after sundown. Be there. Okay, I'll be there. But don't expect me to be the life of the party, Rosie. Kovach. I hate chunky peanut butter. I'll give you half my turkey. Oh, really? Oh. In exchange for dropping Samus from attempted murder to assault. Rosie, he had his wife with a barbell. He was weight training. It fell out of his hand. On top of her head. So, where are your witnesses? Okay. Assault with a deadly weapon. Two years state prison time. I'll talk to my guy. Thank you. Okay. What about the Snell case? Trial. Oh, come on, this is his first offense. Oh, still grand theft. He wasn't even in the bank. Taping an out-of-order sign on an ATM deposit slot and substituting his own strong box still counts. No deal. 
Hey, is that a brownie? Here, you take it. I shouldn't be eating them anyway. What about People versus Cameron, alias Gray? America's oldest living teenager? You know, Deb, I mean, I really don't even know what we're doing with this one. I mean, you can't make the auto theft charge stick, and, and, and the Adamsons complained, and we know that should be handled as a civil case, so I think the kid just probably needs therapy. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, can you imagine anybody willingly going back to high school? Rosie, I'd rather take the bar again. Hm. I don't know. Let me talk to Morton about this one, okay? I mean, you know how he hates up giving up something for nothing. Oh, I gotta go. Uh, I'll call you later, all right? Oh, thank you so much for your lunch. Will you take care of the business? Sure. I'm not going. I would rather go skinny dipping with piranhas than go to this party. <laughs> Rosie, let me ask you. Shoot. Why do you want to give a party for this man? He's not exactly Mr. Congeniality. Yeah, even the parking okay. attendants hate him. I'm not asking you to marry him. I'm just asking you to show him a little compassion. He's been through a lot in the last couple of years, and he's all alone now, and basically we're it. We're his family. Sorry, count me out. My own family's dysfunctional enough as it is. Rosie, if I wanted to be verbally abused by a bad-tempered, close-minded fathead, I'd spend an evening with my father. Come on, guys. I mean, it's free food and free drinks. What could be so bad? How long do we have to stay? OK, fine. If it's such a hardship for you to make one lonely human being feel that he belongs somewhere, don't come. All right, all right. I'll come. I'll come, too. Oh, 730. Don't be late. I'm not bringing him a present. You're coming to Kovach's birthday party, aren't you, Hank? Do I have a choice? No. All right, all right, I'll be there. I think you're wasting your time with Kovach. He's the type of guy who eats small reptiles for breakfast. Well, you were there that night, Hank. You saw him getting drunk on his birthday in a bar. It was pathetic. That yeah, was pathetic, but it was his choice. You're not going to change this guy's life by handing him some balloons and a piece of cake. Well, maybe I'm doing it for myself. So the next time I see him sitting alone in a bar drunk, at least I know I tried. Yes. Oh, hi, Deb. Really? Great. Oh. <laughs> that many? <laughs> oh, well. Who knew? All right, all right, I'll be there. Eight different families? Yep. Wade Elliot Shane has been a busy guy. Seems he's been in high school since he graduated from college. <laughs> he always uses the same M.O. He poses as an 18-year-old. You know, he's the Dick Clark of the criminal justice system. Oh, but this is Thanks to our country's war machine, Shane's father has been wounded in every conflict from Grenada to the Gulf War. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's incredible, Rosie. He plays upon the patriotism of each family by pretending that dear old dad has been injured protecting our nation. I mean, they, they buy him clothes, they feed him, they even give him an allowance. They practically trip over themselves trying to put a yellow ribbon around whatever happens to be growing in the front yard. Well, we're talking thousands of dollars of fraud here, not to mention eight fugitive from justice warrants. Oh, but there's good news. Yeah? Yeah. We're dropping the auto theft charges. Darling! Oh, darling, I was so worried about you. Who's the dame? Your fiance? Doreen. Todd is sitting in his car out in front. Don't you want to talk to him? Well, he's your husband. You're going to have to talk to him eventually. I don't feel like it right now. So what do you want me to do? Tell him to go home? Let him sit out there all night. I don't care. Fine. I'll just go out there and tell him to leave. OK. Doreen, look, you've been here 12 hours, and all you seem to be able to do is watch old movies. I told him I needed a few days. 48 hours without being mommy, without picking mashed spaghetti out of the carpet or wiping marker pen off the wall. Is that too much to ask? I mean, it's only been one day and already he's out there in the driveway whining. Doreen. 
when do you think uh, you might be ready to leave? I'm not sure. To wait and see. See what? What I want and how I feel. Well, I'm sorry. That is not a satisfactory answer. How you feel about what? What you want out of what? I think I might be pregnant. What? I think I'm pregnant. What? Pregnant? Did you try and get pregnant? No. Just happened. Doreen, you are the wife of a doctor. It doesn't just happen. Rosie, it isn't about birth control. It's more complicated than that. Does Todd know? No. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I didn't want to tell Todd till I was certain I was pregnant. Well, are you or aren't you? I haven't been able to bring myself to take the test yet. Oh, Doreen! <laughs> Basically, I'd say that you could plan on spending the next several years in court. Years? Well, after we deal with the larceny and the fraud charges here, then you have to stand trial in Texas, Arkansas, Nevada, and, well, every other jurisdiction where you spent your senior year. Figures. See, that's the only way they can keep me quiet. They just shuffle me around from state to state. Jeez. These guys won't stop at anything, will they? I guess not. Let me see. So far, you've told people your father was a downed fighter pilot in Iraq, a Navy SEAL injured in Panama, a Marine wounded in Grenada, and a hostage in Iran. That's right. Did I leave anything out? No. Now, let me tell you about Wade Cameron's father. He's an out-of-work mechanic in Denton, Texas. He's a man who has never served in any branch of the military. A man who filled up his gas tank one day and just took off, leaving his wife and his son Wade to fend for themselves. I don't know anyone named Wade Cameron. Uh, look, we have your preliminary hearing this afternoon, and quite frankly, I don't know what to tell the judge. Tell him the truth. The truth. I wish I knew the truth. You won't even tell me your name. Would you answer just one question for me? Anything. Why the families? The Moffats and the Cliffords and the Giannini's. Why them? I like families. They make you feel like, um, like you belong somewhere. Well, at this point, at least eight families think that Wade Robert Cameron belongs behind bars. Miss O'Neill, like I said, I don't know anybody named Wade Cameron. Of course. I'll be seated. Um, see, people versus Cameron. Alias Gray, case number J2823671. Uh, I'm waiting. Is the defendant present? I say, is. Uh, what? Oh. Uh, Miss O'Neill, it, it seems that your uh, client, uh, Mr. Cameron, has decided to eschew the hospitality of the County of Los Angeles. I beg your pardon, Your Honor? Uh, Deputy Douglas tells me that on the way here from jail that your client has disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, and I am holding you personally responsible, Miss O'Neill. I'm issuing a bench warrant for his arrest. Uh, this court is adjourned. You gotta hand it to him, Rosie. The guy's good. He borrowed a cigarette from the guard and set the squad car on fire. No. 
Apparently, he escaped while the officers were putting out the flames. I'll tell you the part that bothers me, Hank. After all this, I still don't know who he really is. Uh, he's Wade Cameron, Rosie. You got the fingerprints to prove it. In my head, I know that. But Hank, he believed he was Shane Gray. You go first. Uh, uh, excuse me. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's my birthday. Are you sure Mr. Kovach is coming? I told him it was urgent. He'll be here if only to kill me. <laughs> I'll bet that's him. Damn it, Rosie, I've had it. Where's Dory? Hello, Todd. Oh, thank you. Great. Hi. Hi. So where's the man of the hour? Oh, I know. I look pretty foolish if he doesn't show up. Oh, yeah, well, look at it this way. Everybody would probably be relieved. <laughs> yeah, but what am I going to do with all the goulash? Oh, I'll get it. Right. So you're Mr. Kovach. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got your message. What the hell's so important? I had to give up my club night to get over here. Yeah, well, come on in. I'm sorry yeah. to have bothered you. I just need to talk to you about one thing. Uh, hey, everybody, look who's here! It's Kovach! Right. Kovach? Wait a minute. This party's for you. Yeah, for your birthday. Who do you think you are? The American Red Cross? I don't need you or anybody else to give me a birthday party. I hate birthday parties. I celebrated my birthday just the way I wanted to. Yeah, drunk off your butt in a bar. That's pathetic. Well, maybe it is. But it's none of your damn business. Pardon me, Rosie, do you have another bathroom? It becomes my business when I have to keep you from getting your head bashed in. What do you want from me? I didn't ask you for this job, and I didn't ask you for your pity. So find yourself another project and leave me a hell alone. Rosie? No, you do. I do not have another bathroom. Well, your sister's locked herself in the john. Now nobody can use it. Just a minute, you Dell. For some misguided reason, I thought that there was something decent and honorable underneath that hostile exterior of yours, but obviously I was wrong. So please, just go ahead and leave. We were having a great time before you got here. Come on, you Dell. Kovach, you are a very selfish man. Who the hell are you? Excuse me. Yes. Doreen, it's your sister. Let me in. Now. This is ridiculous. I need a drink. Rosie. Here. I'm trying, you, Dale. Do you know that she was up till midnight last night decorating the living room in those, those stupid Hungarian streamers and balloons? Hey, hey, hey. I'm not finished yet. Look, do you know what today is? Today is her birthday. But she decided to do this for you. So what I don't get is why you're being such a jerk to her, Mr. Kovach. Look, I thought this would make you happy. I mean, don't you care that all these people are here for you? I mean, no one has ever given me a surprise party before. Personally, I would love a surprise party. So what is wrong with you? You know, I just now figured out why you don't have any friends. Oh, Mr. Kovach. Charlotte O'Neill. Well, happy birthday. Fiona has told me so much about you. Doreen, it's just me. Let me in, please. Rosie, what if you... Just one sec, you tell me. Okay, just a sec. Just a sec. It's a minus. I'm not pregnant. Congratulations. He wants to talk to you. Okay. Do you mind? Uh, well, what if, 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 if you go? <laughs> oh, boy. I told you to leave. Goulash needs a little spicing up. But all in all, it ain't a bad spread. Praise from Caesar. 
Happy birthday, Counselor. Thanks. Almost forgot. This came for you last night. Rosie, thanks for everything. On my way overseas, got the family over there. Chow, Wade Cameron. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.